Hi and welcome to Relative Frequency and Expected Outcomes. Just before we start, a quick reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. And so we're going to begin with um, Gordon taking a survey of the colour of cars passing by his school in an hour. And the results are shown in the table. So he saw red cars, blue cars, white cars, silver cars and other coloured cars with 12 reds, 17 blues, 25 whites, 15 silvers and 11 others. And we've been asked to calculate the relative frequency of each colour, giving your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. Now the term relative frequency, basically this is an experimental probability. It's something because we don't know the exact theoretical probabilities of a car being red or blue or white because we don't know all of the information. But what we can use is the information that we've gathered in an experiment as an estimate for the probability. And so relative frequency just means how many have we got compared to the total. And so the very first thing that we actually need to know is how many cars did he spot in total? And so we need to add all of those together. So 12 plus 17 plus 25 plus 15 plus 11. So 2, 9, 14, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. So he uh, found 80 cars going past his school. And so then if we want a relative frequency, well the relative frequency of red is that he saw 12 of them out of 80 in total. And so 12 out of 80, we want to simplify it, will be 6 out of 40. And if we simplify again, it will be 3 out of 20. If we go to the blue cars, well blue, that was um, 17 out of 80. Now 17 out of 80 is actually as simple as we could get. The white cars, well, we have 25 of those out of 80 in total. If I divide both of those by 5, I'm going to get 5 over 16. Um, the silver cars, well, the silver cars, there were 15 of them out of 80. And so again, let's divide them both by 5. That's going to be 3 out of 16. And finally, the other, well, there were 11 other cars out of the 80 in total and again that is actually the simplest form and so what we can do with this the relative frequency now this is an estimate of the real probability so if i wanted to i could do some calculations to work out how many um, red cars i may expect to see the next hour and so on depending on how many cars i see so next we have an experiment where a biased coin is flipped 40 times um, now, first of all, the word biased means that it is not fair. We would expect that if we had a fair coin, that when we flip it, um, we would have a half chance of getting one side and a half chance of getting the other side. Um, but a biased coin means that it has been weighted in some way so that one side is more likely than the other. And so in this case, when we uh, flip that coin uh, 40 times, we got 30 heads and 10 tails so obviously it's been weighted towards heads more than it has tails now it's asked us to use this information um, to find out how many heads i would expect if i flipped the coin 100 times now expected outcomes how many you would expect to happen now this comes from the probability multiplied by the number of trials and so if I have a probability for something and then I know how many times I'm going to do the experiment, I can calculate how many I would expect to get. But in this case, we don't have a probability because we don't know exactly what the probability of heads and tails is. But what we do have is an experiment. And so we've got a relative frequency. We know for heads that we got 30 out of 40. So 30 times out of 40, we got heads. Now, if I simplify that, well, I can divide both by 10. It means that the probability of heads is currently three quarters. And so if I want to know how many I would expect, I'm going to take the relative frequency, the three quarters, and I'm going to multiply it by the number of trials, 100. And so what I'm looking for is three quarters of 100. Well, three quarters of 100, we divide by four, which is 25, and multiply by three, 
75. And so I would expect 75 heads if I flipped the coin 100 times. And finally, we're told that Callum has a four-sided coloured spinner and he wants to check if it is fair. He decides to record the results from a series of experiments. So he started off by just spinning that spinner uh, 10 times. And in the 10 spins, he got six reds, one yellow, two blues and one green. Then he continued and he did it for 50 spins. And by the time he'd completed 50 spins, he had 10 reds, 15 yellows, 18 blues and seven greens. And then he continued even further. He went on to do 100 spins. And at, after 100 spins, he had 24 reds, 27 yellows, 26 blues, and 23 greens. And we've been asked, is Callum's spinner fair? And we've been asked to give a reason for your answer. Now, this question, if we had a look at the very first set of information. Now, at 10 spins, we've got 6, 1, 2, and 1. Now, if this was a fair spinner, we would expect to get a similar number of reds, yellows, blues, and greens uh, in our experiment. Now, at the moment, with 10 spins, we have far, far, far more red, uh, red coming out than any other colour. And so it would suggest that right now it is not that fair. But then we've continued the experiment. We've continued it until we had 50 spins. And when we get to 50 spins, again, we would still be expecting equal, roughly equal numbers of each four, each of the four colours if it was a fair, uh, fair spinner. And at this point, we have 10 or 15 or 18 or 7. Now, these are getting closer, but still, 18 is much more than 7. But then finally, when we come to 100 spins, once we've completed 100 spins, we now have 24, 27, 26, 23. Now, if this was a fair spinner, we would be expecting that a quarter of them would come out as red, a quarter would come out as yellow, a quarter as blue, and a quarter as green. And so we'd be expecting 25, 25, 25, 25. Now, with this, if we look at that, we haven't got exactly that coming out, but this is an experiment. It doesn't always go the way we think, but it is very, very close. And so that is suggesting that actually it is a fair spinner. And the really important thing here is the number of trials we have completed. Now, if we only did 10 spins of that spinner, we couldn't really be that sure of our relative frequencies being close to the real probabilities. Because at the start, what we actually had was six tenths of our, um, of our spins being red, only one tenth being yellow. But by the end, once we've done 100 spins, we had 24 out of 100. Now, 24 out of 100 is around about, well, that will be 12 out of 50, it'd be 6 out of 25. And that is very close to exactly a quarter. A quarter would have been, um, a pro well, we would be looking at uh, uh, 25 out of 100. And so the change in the uh, change in the relative frequency is because the more tests you do, the better your experiment is at predicting or estimating the probability. And so I would be saying that yes, it is fair, because once we had completed the most test, once we had completed the most tests, we had roughly a quarter of each. And the key here is that as you do more tests, you are getting closer to the true probability um, of each of these events. And so um, the more tests you do, the better results you're going to get. And so we end with the exam question. This came from the Edexcel paper in November 2017, and it was on foundation paper three. And so when, draw, uh, when a drawing pin is dropped, it can land point down or point up. Lucy, Mel and Tom each dropped the drawing pin a number of times. 
The table shows the number of times the drawing pin landed point down and the number of times the drawing pin landed point up for each person. Rachel is going to drop the uh, drawing pin once. Whose results will give the best estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up? Give a reason for your answer. So what we need to think about is each of these people, if we want to know who is going to give us the best estimate, well, we need to think about how many tests did they actually do? And so if we have a look, Lucy did 31 and uh, 14. So she did 45 tests. Mel did 53 plus 27. And so Mel did 80 tests. Tom did 16 plus 9, 25 tests. So whose results are going to be most reliable? Well, in this case, the most reliable results are the ones where we've done the most of them. And therefore, Mel would be the best, uh, best in this case because she has done the most tests. In part B, it tells us that Stuart is going to drop the drawing pin twice. We need to use all the results in the table to work out an estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up the first time and point down the second time. Now it is very important here, they use the word all the results. And what that is suggesting is that actually the best um, estimate we could get of each of the probabilities would be to put everyone's work together and so what we want to know is all together how many tests did we do and how many of each did we get and so for point down we had 31 plus 53 so that is 84 and plus 16 that is 100 so we got 100 point downs for point ups we got 14 plus 27 um, so that is 41 plus 9 is 50 and in total that means we did 150 tests and so what we then want to do is we want some probability so we want to find an estimate for the probability of point down so we want the relative frequency well the relative frequency of point down is 100 out of 150. Now if we simplify that, that's actually two thirds. If we divide them both by 50, it's two thirds. And point up, well that is going to be the rest of them. It will be 50 out of 150 or one third. And so the question was, what is the probability that it is lands point up the first time and point down the second time? Well, the probability of point up is one third. The probability of point down is two thirds. Now, if we are looking at a combination of probabilities, so for basically a point up and a point down, the word and suggests in probability that we need to multiply. And so this is one third times two thirds. One third times two thirds, we multiply the top, so one times two. We multiply the bottom, three times three. And so our estimate would be two ninths for the probability.